Hey guys, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips here. We're revisiting a big topic today, and that is the rear pulley derailleur systems. Remember, we looked at this a while ago with Ceramic Speed Busted video. God, we got huge heat from Ceramic Speed. So this video is specifically not just about Ceramic Speed. It's about the OSPW systems in general. Brian Jones has written to me and he said, what saving is, am I gonna get on my bike if I race in an Ironman, 180 kilometers, and let's be honest, you need every saving you can get if you're gonna be on your bike for 180 kilometers. So he's asking, what saving am I gonna get on my bike if I put a OSPW on my bike, ride 180K versus without, and he's planning to do Louisville, I think it is, and Kona. So let's have a look at that. A little spoiler, if you can't be bothered to listen all the way through this video, it's gonna be a disappointment, guys these OSPWs are going to save you much less than you think. $500 for how many seconds do you think? Post it in the question above here. Tell me how much you think you'll save. And I'll tell you from our science-based analysis in about five minutes how much you really save. All right, here goes, guys. Okay, so really quickly, this is what we did, guys. We looked at all of the data out there on OSPW systems. We also gave a few of these out to riders and we asked riders who already used OSPWs what were their savings. We took those headline claims and we compressed them into what we think is an honest view. We wrote a custom calculator, you can download it below, such that you can calculate your exact gains on your exact course depending on your weight, the elevation of the course, the distance of the course. Basically, it's going to give you a pretty accurate view of what the OSPW is going to save you. But here are the headlines that are claimed. Well, what they claim is the bearing quality is better. They're claiming the ceramic bearings in all of these units are better. Well, we already know ceramic bearings versus good quality steel is broadly comparable. But yeah, there might be a tiny version upgrading over stock. We also know they tend to take out the seals and the grease, you know, so they have that perpetual motion effect that you see so uh, regularly, but that's not under tension. So don't write home about that, but that's another tiny saving, maybe 0.1 of a watt in reality. They also have oversized pulley wheel, don't they? So the jockey wheel will rotate less. There'll be slightly less strain, in it, strain on it, I guess, over the course of a ride, maybe 10% or so less rotation. Also the chain articulation is less, if you think about it, is going round a wider circle. I've also seen them take out alternate teeth, so you get um, maybe less engagement friction. Who knows? But I would say each of those savings is not more than 0.1 of a watt each, and stacked up, we're talking about 0.5 of a watt. But I guess I'm missing the big one. The big one no one really talks about is the tension in the pulley arm itself. That's determined largely by the spring. That's why they have those little holes in there where you can adjust that. So Ceramic Speed and other aftermarket solutions have an adjustable tension and that will save you about 0.9, maybe one watt overall. That's not the total saving. I mean, that's the saving compared to stock. So if you put that in the positive column, we've got 0.9 from the spring tension and we've got 0.5 from miscellaneous other savings, 1.4 in derailleur friction saved. Bank that in the positive column. But we're trying to be accurate here. So we're not just talking about in the positive column, we're talking about some offsets as well. The first obvious one is weight. These things are around 50 to 70 grams. Ceramic speed, for example, is gonna be around 30 grams more than your stock SRAM Red or Dura Ace, which means 30 grams extra over the course. Yeah, it's a tiny amount, but bear with me here. Okay, talking about tiny amounts, We've also got an enlarged chain maybe to get perfect running order on these devices. You might have to put an extra two links in the chain. Okay, I'm getting a bit ridiculous now, but that would be about four grams. So in the negative column, we've got around 34 grams of weight costs. In addition to that, we've got aero drag. These things are bigger than stock, right? Maybe 20 to 30 millimeters bigger than stock. And that isn't going to come for free. Ceramic Speeds claims that there's no effect. Really means 
they haven't got a measurable effect that they've been able to write home about or one they want to declare. But the truth is, there is an effect. It may be 0.5 of a watt, it may be 0.8, it may be 1.2. For the purpose of this demonstration today, we're going to call it initially 0.8 of a watt in aero drag. So we've got these three big factors, right? We've got drivetrain gains, we've got weight losses, and we've got aero losses. Now, put those into our spreadsheet and it will automatically upregulate, it will automatically adjust these baseline confounds for the nature of the ride you're doing. So for example, if you're doing a fast ride downhill, obviously your speed is going to be higher, the aero drag effect is going to go up. The spreadsheet does that, you don't need to worry about it. Yes, you can adjust the baseline variables if you want, but the bottom line is it's scaling the variables, like weight will become more important on a more uphill style course. Now, back to Brian's question. Yes, we haven't forgotten about Brian's question. Brian's question is how much is he going to gain or lose, yes, by installing the OSPW into his system. Put it into our spreadsheet, put 180 kilometers in there, Let's adjust the average grade over the whole course. Now this is a hugely simplistic way to do it. But let's say Kona has an average grade, if you work it out, of around about 0.3%. Then the bottom line is, if you put an OSPW system in there with those typical pros and cons, you know, aero drag versus drivetrain gains. I'm sorry to say, Brian, that all told, we calculate that there's no gain to be made on Kona from an OSPW system. Whoever makes it is basically a loss, and that loss is around 11 seconds. So that could be a very expensive mistake. Now hang on, before you write to me and complain, yes, it does depend on the power of the rider, the speed of the rider, and the grade of the course. Of course it does. And you can put your course variables onto our OSPW marginal gains calculator and find what it is for you. You can also criticize the method, that would be fine, and say you can't just average the course gradient, that's fair. So we actually did a more accurate version behind the scenes. The way we did that is went into Stravistic stroke elate for an actual rider in Kona and we took each grade segment, like the amount of time at, let's say, 20%, 17.5, 15, 12.5, etc. And then we work out the gain per time on that segment, per elevation, per speed, and then we put them all in a spreadsheet, and then we see what the effect is. And the answer to that, the more, the more accurate answer, is not 11 seconds. You actually do make a gain, you do make a saving by installing OSPW when you're going uphill. Surprisingly, when you're going uphill, the aerodynamic losses are less, the drivetrain frictional gains actually more. So if you were just doing an uphill race, and actually a slower rider as well, you would get an overall gain from OSPW. But that more accurate method actually comes out and tells us that it's still an overall loss because of the nature of the course, because of the time at each grade. The total time lost with OSPW in Kona is around 31 seconds. $500 for 31 seconds. That seems to be a classic case of Emperor's New Clothes. A particularly expensive set of Emperor's New Clothes. Okay, before I go guys, if you want to look into our method or critique our method a little bit more, then I'll post a detailed spreadsheet review of how we look at this and how we analyze it behind the scenes. In addition to that, if you've got specific data from your OSPW, or you want to tell me why your OSPW works for you, I'm happy to hear it. I'm not saying it doesn't work for anyone. So for example, if you've got a really crummy baseline setup, and you upgrade to a smooth, you know, enhanced, smooth bearing system with a good chain line, you're probably going to get a gain. Also, statistically, what we've shown in our spreadsheet is if you're a slower rider, paradoxically, more time on course, and if you're going more uphill, then you're going to get more gains with OSPWs than not. So yeah, there are some situations where OSPW is going to work for you. But for most people, I would say OSPW it's not an investment that you have to make. 
It may not even be one that you want to make, and it probably is the most costly upgrade you can make as well. 